Hi there and welcome to Saving Ophelia. My name is Thais and this, well this is Ophelia. As you can see I haven't gotten around to removing her mast yet. Life got in the way, you know, work and all that jazz. But the mast still being in place is not the same as saying nothing has happened. I received this in the mail and seeing that I haven't bought anything else from Amazon recently, I kind of assume it's a new stop solenoid for Ophelia's engine, but let's open it and see. So with that excitement out of the way, let's see what's in here. Yeah. That is a very big package for something very small, but I guess that's how things are done now. Let's see. Yeah, it seems to be wrapped in plastic as well, rather tape and... Uh, no, I'll just end up ruining things. I think I'd better, better grab a knife or scissors or something. I never really understood the appeal of unboxing videos, but I thought I'd have something that's wrapped, so why not unbox it? And well, let's see. Yeah, that does look like a solenoid all right. And yeah, it seems very similar to the old one. There is a bit of difference, but it's really not much. You can see that the new one is a bit larger than the old one, it's a bit longer. Let's see the business end here. Yeah, I can't compare those, of course, because that's been removed from the old one, but it does seem feasible that this one could be fitted into the old one, or well, something very similar. It's a bit odd though, it seems that it's going to retract when I apply power to it. Whereas I thought the old one would extend when it got power, but I guess I'll have to fit it on the boat to see how things work. So this time around, I'm going to be testing this new solenoid here that I got. Yeah, that will be the lower one. And of course, I'm going to have to install it back here in the fuel pump where it belongs for it to have any work to do. But before I can do that, I'll need to put the um, control panel in place. And well, a few things missing here, as you might know. I haven't put them back in place, the belt tensioner and so on. And once I have that in place, well, then I can test if the engine runs as it's supposed to and if the solenoid stops it. But before I can do that, well, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to test how the solenoid performs on its own. So I'm just going to hook up the power and connect the uh, control panel and then connect the solenoid without installing it in the engine and see how it responds to power and no power. Just to be sure what it is that I'm doing here because I have a sneaking suspicion that the reason this old one was gutted was because, well, I thought that this would be a off solenoid that would be retracted when it didn't have power and then be pushed out when got power but this one should be exactly compatible for all I've been able to see and that doesn't seem to work that way so the problem might have been here that this didn't work they had some kind of electrical issue so they couldn't get it to disengage and open the fuel and couldn't start the engine so they pulled out the innards of this thing because that would allow them to run the engine yeah makes sense if you want to run the engine and well you probably do i however would also like to be able to stop the engine and seeing that i've taken the electrical parts apart anyway i can control this individually without controlling anything else so hopefully the problem that they've had here shouldn't be a problem for me with this one but i guess we'll see about that yeah, I just noticed that I have a lot of these pink crystals around here and they are from the coolant. It's what's left behind when the coolant evaporates. So I have definitely have some kind of coolant leak and it's not obvious where it is. I think it might be up in this connection here because that does seem a bit wet. 
but that wouldn't explain how the crystals get over here because it would just run down then here well it might run on the surface back here and then run down i'm not entirely sure but i need to do something about that before well before we go sailing anywhere but that's not anytime soon if i refill the reservoir with water i should definitely be able to keep the engine going for quite a while before this kind of leak becomes an issue but yeah i'll need to hunt that down at some point but for now i'm just going to check that solenoid well as you can see i'm currently charging the battery but that should be almost done. I think we're about. Let's see what the status that will be here. Ninety-five percent. So that should be plenty to get the engine running when I need to get it running. Now I'll just hook up the control panel, and even though it does look like a rat's nest, I haven't messed around with it since I last used it, so it should be working. Well, emphasis on the should, because by now I should know better than say something works and do or doesn't work. There we go. Let's see, put that down here. And then, well, then I'll need to hook up the power, I guess. There we go. Now the system has got power. So let's see if things work as they're supposed to. Well, as far as we can. I'm not going to start the engine <laughs> because that would be kind of futile right now. But, well, this shows power and I don't know if you can see it, but the thermometer over here also jumps up so it's definitely seeing something so that works as well the pressure meter well obviously isn't going to show anything when the engine's not running but so far so good it means that we only need to switch on the heater relay and then turn the engine to start it when we're going to start it which isn't right now so this down here is the fuel pump, this entire thing here. And this is where the solenoid that cuts off the fuel flow is supposed to be seated. And well, as you can see, there's nothing in there right now, but while I had the solenoid out, I had something plug the gap because I'd really rather not have any dirt get into the fuel because it's after the filter and that would just cause a whole lot of mess. But this is the wire that's supposed to engage the solenoid. So I'll connect the solenoid to that and then just touch it on the, uh, on the engine block because that should complete the circuit if I engage the power on the control panel. And then I can see what happens. And well, more or less anything metal here should be enough to connect the circuit. So let's do that. Now I'd better not. Drop the nut here because that would be a mess. Let's see. I can't really see what's going on when this cap is on, so I'll remove that. And then my plan is to turn on the power for the solenoid and touch it to the, uh, well, to this metal part down here because that should complete the circuit. So let's see. Nothing happens right now. Well, there isn't any connection there. Oh, maybe I should turn on the power. That might help. I'll be the main power. And now I have power for the solenoid. Let's see. Well, nothing happens here. I don't know why I could touch it otherwise. Yeah doesn't seem like anything's happening so that's going to be an issue yep 
Yeah, that's going to require a bit of uh, troubleshooting, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking that the first step is probably to check whether or not there is the power here that's, that's supposed to be. And, well, let's see. I think you might be able to see it down here. Yeah. Now, main power, power to the solenoid. Well, there's supposed to be power to the solenoid now. Let's see. If there is, then I should be able to measure something between up here and basically anywhere on the engine. That's very, very little. Very little. Let's see. Let's go somewhere a bit closer. To the well, that doesn't seem to be the case, which is a bit odd because there should be a little bit of power here, but next to nothing. That is slightly odd. I think I'm going to have a look at the panel again. So we can see the main power is engaged and the power for the stop solenoid should be engaged as well. And we, while I'm holding this upside down, there is plenty of power here. Would have been quite odd if the battery had been drained already. So that's not it. So, let's see if I can get in here and check here because, uh, there we go. now I should have the copper accessible in here, the metal anyway, let's see, and that meshes the full 13 volts. So the full 13 is passed on here, but somewhere it disappears, which is odd because it didn't used to do that. So I got to thinking, I'm wondering whether or not it might be that the uh, engine, which is used as ground plane or the negative connection isn't seeing any power at all when it's just the battery doing its thing that would be a weird thing but well <laughs> there's plenty of weird stuff in this boat so i might check that and see and if i go in here with the off switch the positive connection and then mesh it to the engine block well then i see 12.8 volts so there's plenty of power between the positive and the engine block so the engine block is working as the negative connection which means that the problem is the lead getting the power to the solenoid and I'm wondering whether or not that might go into a relay on the back or something I'll have to look it shouldn't but then again could have should have would and all that so I'm going to have a look at that so I think the problems I'm seeing here, that's an electrical problem. There's nothing else wrong, really. And I think that somewhere between the control panel and this wire back here, something goes haywire and a solenoid wouldn't see the 12 volts it needs to be triggered. So I decided to make a bypass cable. Well, I have made a bypass cable. I made it quite a while ago for something completely different, but it turns out it might be quite handy now. And I'm going to uh, provide the solenoid with 12 volts directly from the system and see how it works. If it retracts as it should, well, then it should work when it's in place in the engine as well. So I'll take off the connector for the solenoid here. So I'm feeding into the exact same connection. Then I have a ground connection here 
because I think I might have a problem getting a good enough connection via the engine. It, it's used as a ground plane, yeah, but there's a lot of oxides and paint and stuff everywhere. So I'm probably not going to get a good connection here. So I'll bypass everything and go straight for the power up here. Let's see. And let's turn on the power. And the stop solenoid kind of needs some power if it's supposed to work. There we go. Main power, stop solenoid. It's probably going to be inverted, but let's see. Yeah, I'm definitely getting some power here. I'm not getting the solenoid to retract, but I think, yeah. If I insert it a bit, if it's pushed, pushed a bit in, it stays in then the, and comes back out when the power goes. So it would work. The thing is that when this is inserted into the fuel pump, this is going to be pressed ever so slightly that way. And that should be enough for it to retract completely when power is applied. But I guess we'll find out because that's going to be the next step. So let's get the solenoid in place. As you can see, diesel is right up at the edge here. So I don't think I'm going to have any problems with air in the system afterwards. So I'm slightly worried about that, but I don't think I need to be. There we go. I could tighten it further with a wrench, but there's no need to do that right now. Also, there's a rubber seal, so I don't think that even with fuel pressure behind it, it's going to leak. And, well, I don't know how much pressure there's here because the pump, the pumping ac action, as far as I know, is up here. So, yeah, anyways, I'm jabbering about here. Let's see, let's get the bypass in place. There we go, that should give a good solid connection. The wire up here went out of the way. And I think I'm going to place a microphone right down here. That should allow you to hear whether or not it engages. Power and Once more. Yeah, that does seem to work. So with belt tensioning now in place, we should be able to run the engine. I'm going to put some water in the reservoir and enable the cooling and then, well, then we'll see if she works.
So I had the engine running for 15 minutes or something like that, and it's been at operating temperature for, well, 10 minutes, five minutes. So that should be good enough. And I'm going to shut it down now. I just wanted to let it heat up when we hadn't been running for quite a while, but we've done that. And the solenoid seems to be working as intended now. There we go. Everything's shut down without touching the engine. So it works. Thank you for tagging along once again. While we didn't get any closer to having Ophelia hauled out, we did get the fuel shut off system working. And I can now control the engine entirely from the control panel up there. The only thing that's still missing would be the tachometer. But for that, I think I'm going to need a uh, oscilloscope because I'm not entirely sure that this generator down here puts out the uh, pulse signal that it's supposed to. Either that or the tachometer is just broken. But the only way to find that out would be to, well, look at the signal with an oscilloscope. Anyways, once again, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this rump through the electrical and fuel system. Not that we don't, did go very deep, but still. And I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And also, if you have the time, please leave a comment in the comment section because that helps the channel grow and I would really like this channel to grow a bit more. So with that out of the way, thank you and I hope I'll see you again next time and have a good one until then.